we have Aldo Reynoldi now for um, uh, our next meeting. Aldo, I will leave you the uh, speaker now. Uh, we, we will have questions. You do all your presentation. At the end of the presentation, I will ask you the question from the from the group. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Let's start. Okay. So, ciao ragazzi. Um, how are you? Um, I am Aldo Reynoldi, and uh, I run the family business of um, uh, that started in 1925. Uh, thanks to another Aldo Reinoldi, uh, my grandfather. Um, my son uh, calls Marco, so uh, we stopped the, the family tradition uh, made of uh, Aldo and Giuseppe in the past. Anyway, um, we produce wine in Valtellina uh, that is uh, um, uh, an east-west valley uh, in the far north uh, of the country. We are in Lombardy. Um, we are very close to the Swiss border. And in particular, um, our land starts at the end of Como Lake. Um, as I told you before, uh, the valley is, uh, is a peculiar one as it goes east-west. Um, it's west in the middle of the Alps. Uh, so we have uh, on the north side, the Alps, and on the south side, uh, the pre-Alps. Uh, what does it mean? First, uh, um, the Alps, the mountains, uh, protect Valtellina and the vineyards uh, to the cold wind coming from the north of Europe. Second, um, all vineyards face south, uh, which is the best uh, position uh, for red wines. Again, third, uh, um, a special breeze called uh, Breva um, comes, comes from Como Lake and reduces the humidity um, in Valtellina. For but probably the most uh, important uh, expect, um, most of the vineyards, uh, I would say all the vineyards in the Valtellina Superiore DOCG um, area, uh, are on very steep terraces built centuries ago. Um, they actually represent uh, more than 2,500 kilometers of the dried stone walls. Uh, and um, this thing makes Valtellina the largest viticulture of sloping in the country and also the third in, um, in, um, in Europe. Uh, but the stone walls uh, are very important because they impact um, a lot on the microclimates uh, uh, of the vineyards. As the, st as the stones um, catch the warm during the day, and, um, and they release it during the night. So, um, for, the, for, for the reason, uh, we have in Valtellina a special microclimate. In fact, it's, um, it's easy to find in, in the vineyards, the, the cactus plant, that are not typical, of course, of uh, a mountainous uh, climate. And again, uh, just to let you uh, understand the steepness of the vineyards, in some vineyards and in, um, in harvest time, we use the helicopter to move the grapes from the terraces to the winery. Um, so, um, so it's, it's a particular uh, situation. And um, I believe those reasons um, explain why in Valtellina, uh, we, we, we grow um, um, a particular, uh, an iconic grape like the, the Nebbiolo and not uh, the, the white uh, grapes as you could expect uh, looking at the map. And let me tell you something about uh, Nebbiolo. Um, Nebbiolo, as I told you before, is, uh, is an incredible grape variety. Um, very famous, of course, in Piemonte. Uh, but um, 
it, it's incredible in Valtellina because uh, uh, we have the to make something, uh, something that uh, in Valtellina we call uh, um, a particular nebbiolo, a nebbiolo made with the style of the nebbiolo from the Alps. Um, you have to know that nebbiolo in Valtellina is called, uh, is locally called the Chiave Nasca. Chiave Nasca uh, means uh, more um, suitable um, to, to make red wines, so the best grapes to make uh, red wines. Because in the valley we have uh, other local grape varieties, such as the, the Pignola, the Rossola, and the Brugnola, that we don't, knew, we don't know, uh, use uh, for red wines, but we prefer to keep for um, the rosé sparkling in particular. Um, I believe that um, uh, one of the most um, um, yeah, question you, you could uh, you could uh, say uh, answer from uh, from the clients is what's the difference between uh, Nebbiolo in Piemonte, maybe Lange, and in Valtellina? Uh, okay, um, in Valtellina, of course, we have a different uh, climate and different soil compared to Piemonte, especially Lange. So um, you can expect. Uh, from Valtellina, wine with the freshness, more spicy sensation, a lot of freshness, a um, lot of um, fruity sensation. In the mouth, you will probably find not a lot of uh, structure, less body than in Piemonte, but very soft tannins. So um, a totally different style of wine compared to the Nebbiolo from, uh, from Piemonte. Um, so I believe that the, probably the, the wines from Valtellina um, are very easy to, uh, for the food pairing because you can drink those wines uh, in, in many situations with many different types of food. Um, before to speak uh, uh, about the wines, uh, um, I have to tell you that there is uh, another uh, special wine in Valtellina called the Sfursata. Um, this is a wine made with a passimento process, and um, so um, the Sfursata has a, a very famous brother called the Amarone because uh, those two wines um, share the same process. Uh, once again, uh, what's the, the difference between the two wines? Um, of course, the grape variety because the Sfursata is made with a single grape variety, Cabernasca or Nebbiolo if you prefer. Uh, and of course, the Amarone is made with other grapes, uh, Corvina, Rondinella, and Molinara. Different climate, different uh, soils, but especially, I believe that uh, once again, uh, um, the wines from Maltellina, Sfursati included, uh, thanks to the, um, the very low um, sugar level, are wine that you can enjoy with uh, many different food and are wine very easy to drink, uh, even with, uh, maybe more than 15% of alcohol. So I believe that in Valtellina, you will find uh, wines uh, made with a passement or, or without, or without uh, very drinkable. I believe that um, this is the main characteristic of this valley. And uh, I have to tell you that in the last years, uh, the reputation of uh, Valtellina uh, is growing uh, up very, very fast, uh, thanks for, uh, to this characteristic. So we, we see uh, more, uh, um, more interest about Valtellina than in the, in the recent past. Do you have any question? In we're gonna have the question. Uh, I'm getting the question, and we'll we'll answer. Uh, scusa, stiamo ricevendo le, le domande e te le rifacciamo alla fine. Ah, okay. Yeah. So um, we have many different wines because um, uh, Valtellina is uh, is a small um, area. Uh, all the area uh, represent uh, um, today uh, less than 900 hectares of vineyards. Um, Anyway, in Valtellina, consider to, um, that we have two, um, two different areas. 
de valtellina superiore di OCG and the rosso di valtellina. So, let me introduce the first wine, the rosso di valtellina, San Gregorio. Um, so, the, this is the rosso di valtellina doc. So, the, the grapes uh, come from the DC area. Uh, that include uh, uh, that includes um, the vineyards located at the lowest altitude. So, uh, just to give an idea, the altitude of the of the vineyards goes from uh, 300 meters up to 600. Um, what's the goal with the Rosso di Valtellina? The goal is for sure to make a wine very drinkable, uh, medium body. For sure, not a wine for long aging, but uh, um, um, I like to identify this wine like the perfect wine, bread and salami. So a wine for every day that you can enjoy uh, as a aperitif in many situations. So a wine um, with a good balance in terms in terms of, uh, of tennis, but very uh, very drinkable and uh, with the, the correct uh, content of alcohol because. Uh, in most of the um, of the vintages, the alcohol is no is no more than uh, thirteen percent. Uh, sometimes even twelve point uh, five. Uh, okay, the Rosso di Valtellina um, harvest time is in October, and uh, the wine uh, um, do the um, the maceration and the malolactic fermentation in stainless steel, and the wine um, does. Uh, five months in, in, in oak before being uh, placed on the market. Okay. Then we have uh, um, many different wine. Uh, okay, Valtina, let me tell you something about Valtina Superiore DOCG. Uh, the Valtina Superiore includes the, the vineyards um, uh, with an altitude uh, from 300 up to 650 meters of altitude. There are five uh, uh, subzones in, uh, in Valtellina. Sassella, Grumello, Inferno, Valgella, and Maroggia. Um, actually, Reinoldi produced three of the five subs. The, the Grumello, the Inferno, and, and the Sassella. Okay. Um, let's begin with the Sassella. Sassella um, represents an area where the altitude, had, okay, two municipalities, Sondra and Castione, um, all the area, uh, it's about uh, 120 hectares of vineyards. And um, the Sassella is, um, is a particular area because uh, um, the, as the Sassella in, in Italian language, uh, reminded the, the word Sasso is um, is an area um, very rich in, in stones, and the main characteristic of the stones in Sassella um, is that they are very rich in iron. So, in most of the sometimes uh, you can feel the, um, this taste of iron even uh, in the mouth. There is a long uh, aftertaste, and you can uh, feel like a, a, a blue taste. Uh, tasting the, the sassella, and uh, to me the sassella, I would def mm, I would identify the sassella wines as the wine of the elegance. Okay, uh, this is the classic sassella because uh, we also produce the gis, and uh, making this wine uh, once again uh, the the harvest time is the beginning of October. Um, you, uh, in most of the vintages, uh, uh, the first week of October, um, once again, uh, maceration and um, malolactic fermentation in stainless steel, and the wine always do, um, does about uh, um, 20, 20, 22 months in large oak before the bubble. And we, put the, we keep the wine for a couple of months in, um, in in stainless steel, so the assemblage, and the rest is bottle aging. Uh, 
The Grumello, the, the Grumello is, uh, is like the Sassella, identify uh, another subzone, once, uh, once again, two municipalities. Uh, the, the Grumello is, is more east to the, compared to the Sassella. Um, Peace of Sondrio and uh, Montagna in Valtellina. Uh, it represents uh, actually less than uh, 90 hectares of vineyards. And the altitude, uh, uh, goes from 250 meters uh, up to 650. Um, the Grumello um, is not easy to, um, to find a, 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 one single characteristic, but I would say that um, the Grumello is famous for the, um, the roundness of the tannins. So if you look for uh, uh, wines with a good balance, uh, soft tannins. Um, how can I say? Uh, very um, easy to drink. Okay, the Grumello could be the right uh, choice in Valtellina. Uh, the third area, uh, as I told you before, is the, um, the Inferno. The Inferno. Uh, is the smallest of the um, um, of the three uh, subzones, only 55 uh, hectares of vineyards, and the altitude goes from 250 meters uh, up to 550. So it's, uh, it's not so um, the highest um, altitude are not around 650 uh, like uh, Grumello or Sassella. Um, the main characteristic of the Inferno is the structure. If you love wine with more body, more structure, probably the Inferno is the wine that uh, has, most, has uh, more chance to, um, to be your, your favorite. Because, uh, uh, you know, Inferno means hell in, uh, in the Italian language. And uh, that's why the, um, the vineyards are so steep. Uh, those are particularly um, high, and uh, to work there in uh, imagine in uh, summertime, uh, uh, it's like to be at the hell. So uh, very hot climates, uh, hard work, everything by hands. Uh, so uh, to make the this wine is a real uh, inferno. In terms of work, so. um, in Valtellina, uh, keeping, um, keeping the, um, the Valtellina Superiore for one additional year is possible to produce a Reserva. So this, the disciplinare, the, um, uh, the appellation is very flexible. Okay. Um, Reinoldi, uh, only the best vintages. Uh, selecting the best grapes coming from the most interesting, the most performance vineyards uh, is able to make uh, in some years the Reserva. So we make a Reserva of Inferno and a Reserva of uh, Sassella. Um, what's the goal uh, when we make a Reserva? The goal is for sure to make a wine uh, very impressive the wine, of course, uh, is a selection uh, of grapes. The wine uh, has more structure, more, more power, even more elegance, but especially the Reserva is a wine for very, very long aging. So in um, many times in uh, it happens in, then in, uh, in the blind tasting, uh, um, tasting with uh, maybe some Barolo, Marbaresco, the, the reserve of wines, the Sassella Inferno, can be a, the real surprise because uh, people uh, expect uh, long, per, um, beautiful performance uh, with the aging from those region. Uh, but just a few people, very knowledge in wine, know that the Valtellina has uh, the same potential. So, if you want to. Uh, have fun in a blind tasting, okay, uh, introduce the Sassella or Inferno Reserva uh, with uh, other uh, famous wines. Uh, 
We produce, okay, before speaking about the, um, the sforzata, I would love to, to speak uh, about the, um, the Crespino. Crespino is actually an IGT. Uh, this is a wine. This is the the only wine of Rainoldi that's um, where the the grapes are not 100% uh, Nebbiolo or Chiavenasca, but in this wine there is a 10% of uh, of Merlot. Uh, there is a 10% of dried grapes of Merlot because the Merlot um, um, we we have the, the the Merlot before we we keep the Merlot in. Uh, small uh, cases uh, of about five kilos uh, for uh, 20 days uh, and uh, when the Nebbiolo is ready okay we, we do the maceration with uh, the Nebbiolo and this 10 percent of, of uh, dry Merlot so the goal was to make a wine um, um, ready before uh, the selection of Nebbiolo that of course need more time and the wine with a different style, probably more um, uh, a more international style. Uh, let me let me speak now about the uh, the flagship of uh, of Valtellina, the Sforzata. We produce the the, the Sforzata Valtellina, this uh, label, and uh, the. And the Sforzata Carizieri. Okay, um, Sursat, as I told you before, means uh, uh, the wine made only with uh, Nebbiolo, but dry grapes on Nebbiolo. So to make the Sursat, we harvest the grapes at the beginning of October, and we keep the grapes uh, drying in the passimento for about uh, two months, two months and a half, depending on, uh, on weather during the, the autumn. The goal of Sforzata is um, to have a natural con concentration of the grapes. The goal is to let the grapes lose about the 35% of the weight uh, to make a wine um, with the characteristic of Nebbiolo, but at the same time uh, with even more power and more structure. Because uh, you have to know that. Uh, uh, today uh, we are lucky because we we can do now the the green harvest in, uh, in summer time. So it's possible to produce uh, uh, outstanding wine now even uh, without the passimento. But in the past, uh, many years ago, in uh, imagine uh, in the 1960s when this wine was uh, was uh, was born. Uh, uh, the green harvest uh, was uh, uh, was not um, was not present in the area, and uh, only in uh, in a few vintages was possible to produce wine uh, impressive and prolonged aging. Uh, maybe in on, on ten uh, years, maybe it was possible to save a couple, maybe three, no more. Um, so today, to make um, a great wines in Valtellina is not necessary to use the passimento. But passimento is uh, is like a second uh, possibility, a second way to make uh, uh, extreme quality in Valtellina. Um, what's the difference between the two wines? Um, so the, the classic Sforzata, we did a passimento in this building. We are at 350 meters of altitude, and um, we keep the grapes. Uh, on um, for about two months on plastic cases and so we usually press the grapes uh, uh, at the beginning of December to be honest in uh, in 2019 uh, 2018 we had to press the grape before in, uh, uh, in the middle of November in, uh, in 2018 and uh, the 23rd of November uh, last year because the um, because the, the high uh, sugar level uh, at that time. Uh, Carizieri, the other wine, uh, the other sforzata, Casarizieri identify another frutaio, another building dedicated to the appassimento. Um, this building is at 500 meters of altitude, 
And um, what's the, the effect uh, uh, at uh, higher altitude? Um, we see that in the, in the same period in theory, at the altitude, the grapes uh, uh, lose more water, more humidity. So you will find more, uh, more structure, more power in, uh, in the carizzeri. So uh, this wine want to be the, the very impressive Spursad, the wine for uh, the awards. In, in the um, concerning the passement, of course, we want to, um, um, the classic Spursad are um, refined in large oak of about 25 liters. Uh, for uh, 26 months, uh, and the, uh, the Carizzeri only refined in, in barriques uh, for 18 months, and only new 50% uh, of the of the barrique are new, and the, the rest are, are the second user. And uh, so, 18 months, uh, both wine do uh, about uh, two three months of assemblage in stainless steel, and the rest is bottle aging. Okay. I believe that uh, that's all. Thank you, Aldo. So we, we got several questions, so I'm going to try to combine them and, and uh, ask to you. The first, uh, two, the first uh, two questions are actually uh, related uh, together. So the first was, uh, how many producers are in the Valtellina Appellation and how big is the Valtellina Appellation? How big that, pardon, how big? Uh, the area of the Valtellina uh, Appellation is. Okay, um, the consortium uh, has uh, 54 um, um, producers, 54 producers, and there uh, are other, uh, I believe, uh, five, six uh, producers that um, uh, are not part of the consortium. So, totally, the, the total number of uh, producers is around 60. Okay, and the actors, as I told you before, the actors are uh, actually um, 890, so less than nine, 900 actors of vineyards, so they are very small. The total production of, of Valtellina is, um, is around uh, 3 million and a half bottles per year. Thank you. Another question related to the specific area of Altelina is, can you talk about the harvest process in regards of the steepness of the uh, vineyards? How is done uh, the harvest? Come fate la raccolta perché... Sì, sì, okay. Yeah, of course, um, of course the harvest, uh, we, all, uh, we have to do everything by hands uh, because in the... Uh, uh, it's po it is possible to, pr to, uh, to introduce a, a very small tractor only in a few vineyards, but in most of the vineyards, we have to go <laughs> uh, by feet, uh, anything else. Uh, in, uh, as I told you before, in some of them, uh, we, can, uh, we can use the helicopter, moving the grapes from the highest terraces. Um, uh, but it, it is not possible to use the helicopter in, in every vineyard. Also because uh, uh, you have to know that um, the average size of the vineyards in Valtellina is very small. Uh, we estimate uh, about one-fourth of an hectare. So about 2,700 square meters for uh, every vineyard. So they, most of the vineyards uh, are more gardens than uh, the vineyards. Uh, and that, that's why also we, um, uh, Reynaldi, um, take care, um, grow uh, 9.6 hectares of vineyards, but we also have more than 75 uh, vine growers, so suppliers, uh, that every year uh, uh, let the Reynaldi winery to produce about 200,000 bottles. Uh, Another, another question that we received uh, was about uh, the, um, uh, how the uh, global warming uh, climate um, change uh, has been affected to your vineyards, to your, uh, in the area of Valtellina. Did you notice some difference with uh, 
uh, you know, getting warmer, warmer in your area, or you are you are still for you guys, it's not uh, something like that affecting too much. If it does affect, you, how does it affect your harvest? Yeah, we see a um, uh, strong effect, of course. Um, but to be honest, to be honest, I believe that in the last years, the, uh, the global warm global warming had uh, until now a positive impact because uh, uh, if I don't consider the 2014 that was uh, um, a bad vintage in my opinion uh, the rest of the vintages are um, Valtellina uh, incredible uh, we, uh, starting from the uh, 2015 to 2019 uh, in the last years, we, we see the quality of the grapes, the, the, the ripeness of the grapes uh, increasing year by year. So, um, so I, I don't want to say that we, we are quiet and we are happy, but uh, to be honest, the, this is probably one of the, the reasons why the reputation of Altelina is growing uh, so fast. Also because uh, um, in some reason, probably they are at the top of the potential. If the global warming uh, um, we, uh, will impact even more in, uh, in the future, we will increase the quality, the, the, high, the altitude of the, uh, of the vineyards. So probably the future will be to buy and to increase the, the altitude of the vineyards. So we have this possibility because we, we do the culture on the mountains. If you do not do not have uh, the mountains, or you are on a uh, on soft hills, okay, your potential is there. I hear, I hear. So another question. Um, I don't know if you mentioned it in the beginning, but did you explain the meaning of the name San Gregorio? What that refers to? Yeah. Okay. San Gregorio. Okay. Um, San Gregorio is the name of. Um, uh, of a church in the middle of the um, of the area where we have the, the vineyards uh, of the Rosso di Valtellina because we can produce uh, uh, the Rosso di Valtellina in many municipalities but uh, um, uh, the grapes to make the, um, the the San Gregorio Rosso di Valtellina came from the municipality of um, of Ponte, where we also have the uh, uh, the cellar fermentation. So, making this wine, we use the grapes of Rosso di Valtellina coming from uh, this municipality, and there is um, an old church in the middle of the vineyards, and that is the church of San Gregorio. Okay. Uh Another question that uh, we uh, have is, so you were talking about before the Tus for Sat, the classes for Sat and the Carizieri. So you were yes. mentioned that the, the for Sat loses about 35% of the weight when you do the dry yeah. uh, So how is uh, the same for the Carizieri or because the Carizieri is a high altitude, there's, a, uh, there's more um, uh, you know, loss of weight? Yeah, um, we see that, okay. Um, in 1994, um, we, we bought a second building to make the Passimento. And at that time, the, the Sforza Carizzeri was, was not exist, uh, did not exist. And, but we realized in 1994 that the grapes in Rizzeri were uh, um, more dry than uh, the other grapes. So in 1994, we did a single Sforza, the classic one. In 1995, the, the year after, we decided to keep separating the grapes from that uh, fruit tile, that, that building. And so the 1995 represented the first uh, edition, the first vintage of, uh, of the Carizzeri. It actually is for sure the most, uh, not the best wine, but for sure the most uh, famous wine of Rinaldi. The wine with more awards, uh, the, uh, so the carry, uh, the, the best score on my spectator, you know. So uh, on your presentation, um, I don't think you uh, present the Prugnolo, right? Yes. So where does yeah. the Prugnolo fit? I understood that. <laughs> somebody, yeah. 
somebody very, very uh, pay very attention to the presentation. Say, where is the Pugnolo? What's uh, where the Pugnolo? Yeah. <laughs> It, it, it was just here on, uh, on the chair, <laughs> close to me. Yeah, yes, um, the Prugnolo um, yeah, is a Valtellina Superiore, first of all. So, um, so it means that the, the grapes come from the, uh, the vineyards on terraces. Uh, um, this is a, a DOCG, uh, but this wine is, a, is um, mainly a, a blend of Chiavenasca coming from different municipalities. So we, in this wine, um, I believe this wine um, has um, uh, an amazing potential because we can, um, um, we can, we blend the grapes, but we blend also the potential of the grapes. So for example, at the lowest altitude in, in some municipality, uh, for example, in Castione, you can uh, you can have structure. Um, at the highest altitude, usually you have um, less sugar percent, uh, less less uh, uh, sugar level. Um, but there is uh, there is a lot of uh, freshness, a lot of uh, elegance. So. When we, we, we make this wine, we have the possibility to blend different characteristics from many different vineyards. So I believe is, uh, it's more easy blending different uh, vineyards to find a wine with more, uh, with more balance. So that's why we... So last question about the Prugnolo. If you if you're do a tasting and you present the uh, wine, when you will present the Prugnolo? After the other Subedzor? Um, yeah, uh, there is, in my opinion, there is not a rule. You can, you can present the Prugnolo uh, in the middle of uh, Sassella, Grumello, or Inferno. Uh, for sure, I would present the, the, the Prugnolo after the Rosso di Valtellina and before the Reserva wines. But uh, honestly, yeah. You can, uh, you can the, the, put the wine in the middle of the classic Sassella Inferno Grumello. Last question for you is a, a personal question from me. I, I always, I love uh, um, to play the wine pairing at uh, many events. And I would like uh, to ask you, if you can give me your a classic pairing from a traditional dish from the Valtellina with one of your wines. So just pick one wine and do a classic pairing with the, a typical dish from Valtellina, please. Okay, um, I can answer uh, in, a, in a very um, formal way, of course, red wines, so meat, uh, cheese, uh, seasoned cheese, uh, if we speak about the reserve wines or the spursat, but, but my personal opinion is that uh, we have to play a little bit with wine, and uh, I believe the um, uh, the good connection is not food and wine, but uh, wine and people. Uh, you share the bottle of wine. You, honestly, uh, I don't pay a lot of attention uh, to the food uh, I will eat uh, I for dinner or lunch, uh, but uh, I pay more attention uh, to the person. Uh, I want to share the, the battle. So, to me, uh, okay, let let's let's get some risk and let's play a little bit of wine uh, with wine. Okay, I don't so think that we have to to follow too many rules. So your, my suggest, opinion. your suggest is that don't pick a, a good dish; pick a good company. Right, always, always. <laughs> Well, uh, Aldo, thank you so much. Uh, you, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for being with us uh, today. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, we had many questions from the group. Thank you for answering uh, all of them. Your presentation was uh, fantastic. And um, I hope to see you soon uh, in, uh, yeah. in Italy, in Valdea, or in the United States where you are able to uh, visit us. Thank you so much. Yeah, to enjoy a good, a good uh, uh, bottle of wine together. Yes, thank you so much. Okay, we miss it. Ciao, ciao ragazzi. Ciao. Take care. Ciao.